This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Yet, as eight-year-old, Mommy recovered from her injuries after falling down the well. And as her memories returned, it so happened that, from wherever her mind had gone, she brought back the ability to see ghosts and hear disembodied voices. The family says Mami was destined for the secrets, and since Nono couldn't teach them to her, the secrets had come directly to her. Four decades later, when I suffered my accident and lost my memory, the family was thrilled. Thea's poured drinks, told one another with an air of festivity, There he goes again, the snake biting its own tail. And then they waited to see how exactly the secrets would manifest in me. This is a story that happens in Spanish, where Mami and the Tías call each other vos, the archaic thou, but they use tú with me, the informal tender you. Theirs is the way of speaking in Ocaña, where our family is from, and where language can sound like a colonial fossil. In Spanish, our stories are slow, then fast, and we cackle, constantly. Mommy and I are spooked by the way our lives echo each other's, so we don't often discuss our amnesias. But increasingly, this is an itch I must scratch. I scrape and scald at its touch, only to want to probe into it again. The tías ask me to tell them what it was like to live without a memory. I focus on trying to communicate how surreal it was, how cinematic. The Diaz roll their eyes at me, but they do so while looking at one another, like I am a bad television show they are watching and can safely comment on. Such a gringa, this one, no? What they really want to know is what I dreamt. For Mommy and for me, during our bouts of amnesia, our waking lives were punctuated by a constant state of confusion, but our dreams were grounding. Mommy's dreams were sequential, and in her dreams she was a ghost. In mine, I had no body, and as I say this to the tías out loud, I realize I too believed I was a ghost. We have a word in Spanish for the walking of the dead. Desandar, to unwalk. To walk until the walking is worn thin. To walk until the walking undoes even itself. That ghosts have a particular way of walking is an idea we inherited from the settlers who invaded the continent. But what is intrinsically ours is the sense of porosity, an understanding that we live between the real and unreal, and that often they are one and the same. So to us, the living go on ghost walks, too. The indigenous peoples of the state of Santander, where both my parents are from, dreamt of the beasts they were to hunt the following day. At daybreak, they left and looked for their dream site. Dreams are important for us, too. Forty-three years apart, during each of our amnesias, Mommy and I dreamt of banishment. Mommy was a village ghost. The villagers of the place where she was stuck spoke a language she did not recognize but could nonetheless understand. They worshipped her corpse, unrotting and fragrant, and therefore miraculous. I haunted a horizon of ocean where sometimes the waves withdrew, abandoning the land and bared the seafloor. Sometimes the land glitched and the ocean was suddenly replaced as if it had never gone. The waves shuddered then, coughing up lava and smoke, birthing islands. When Nono was treating an illness, he asked his dreams to guide him to the herbs he needed, and when he roused from sleep, he hiked until the landscape matched his vision, and there he gathered the medicine. When Mommy was a ghost in the dream village where she was stuck, she practiced communicating with the living, and once she recovered her memory and became grounded in her waking life, she knew how to speak to the dead. I observed land being born in my dreams, 
and awake, I studied with attention as the self I was becoming created itself.